Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, uh, thank you all for being here. I'm Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I represent Florida's 25th Congressional District, uh, which is the southeastern portion of Florida, communities of Hollywood and all the places that most of your families take, take their vacation. <laughs> um, I want to thank my colleagues and co-leads on this legislation for their hard work and for their effort on this bill. Um, it's been a long time. We've been working through uh, the, the, the issues on this bill for, uh, for a long time, and it's understandable because um, the challenges and difficulties that our children are facing online um, are not simplistically easy to, uh, to un unravel um, and make sure we can keep them safe, which is why this bill is so important. I want to recognize um, Sammy's parents, Sam Chapman and Dr. Laura Berman, who are here with us today. Um, and I want to especially thank Buddy Carter from Georgia, Kim Schreier from Washington State, Marianna Miller-Meeks uh, from Iowa, and Josh Gottheimer from New Jersey uh, for being here. Um, the families are tireless advocates, uh, especially the Ch uh, Dr. Ch Mr. Chapman uh, and Dr. Berman uh, on this bill and for protecting their children online in honor of their son, the namesake of this bill, Sammy. Finally, I want to recognize the parents of Nate Bronstein, Robin Rose, who started the nonprofit Buckets Over Bullying after the heartbreaking death of their son, Nate, who was viciously cyberbullied by his classmates over Snapchat. I'd be remiss if I didn't also acknowledge the Organization for Social Media Safety. They've played a vital role as an advocate and source of expertise for parents, stakeholders, and Congress itself. As a mother of three, I'm proud to be part of this group of members leading Sammy's Law here in the House. Far too many families and parents have lost a child due to the myriad dangers of social media platforms. And I hope that Sammy's Law will be the start of Congress's work to make sure no other family has to go through the pain of losing a child to online dangers. All parents worry about their child uh, and what, what their child sees or receives on social media. That's human nature. Um, before the advent of social media, um, the most similar and comparative concerns were worrying about your children when they were playing outside and whether or not you could leave them outside playing without your direct supervision. And I know from when I was growing up, when my generation of kids kind of went outside, uh, spent their, their days and afternoons outside, and uh, if their parents knew where they were, it would be surprising, and you just have to come back when the street lights came on. Um, my children's generation grew up um, initially with being able to play outside, for sure, not without my husband, or not, my husband or I or my friends uh, supervising their children directly when they were playing outside because the concerns of danger to our children have grown. And that's when you can see them. <laughs> the, the, the danger that lurks online and the lack of awareness and knowledge and understanding of parents being able to know who their children are, are interacting with that's not a concept that from my days growing up and from my raising my children until the, the advent of social media, that, uh, that you would not know who your child was interacting with. You would not know what, in what way they were communicating with people they didn't know. Um, the whole notion of stranger danger has, uh, has been transformed. Um, and the pace of technological advances that our children have been encountering um, is nearly impossible to, to track, and it's only sprinting ahead now from when my children were younger. Um, I, I constantly worry about what they were exposed to online, on social media, and through apps that profit from sharing messages that are intentionally designed to disappear without a trace. That was a new and very scary frontier of our children's online presence. Um, and there's a way to help our families keep up. Sammy's Law would allow parents to opt into a third-party safety app, third-party safety apps that would notify a parent the moment a problem or concerning content, content comes up. Imagine how powerful it would be if a parent was able to check in with their kid after seeing a concerning trend with their mental health, or if a parent could jump in when they get notified that a drug dealer or a friend was pressuring them into trying or buying drugs. I remember my, my main rule, mine and my husband's main rule, once we were willing to allow our children to have an online presence was you cannot accept anyone that you don't know as a follower. Like, 
you, that has to be the rule. If you don't know them, you don't personally know them, do not allow, allow them to follow you. And, uh, and, and that was a, a good rule of thumb that they followed for the most part. Um, now, I even had an, an instance with my daughter, who, my youngest daughter, who's now 20, where I noticed something on her social media, on one of the social media apps, some weird comment that someone made, and if she was still following that rule, that person shouldn't have been able to make a comment on her app. So I actually pointed it out to her, and it turned out that she had taken that, you know, taken that protection off and was letting anybody um, follow her. Um, she quickly returned to that original plan um, uh, because it served her well, and she realized that what she had done was a mistake. Uh, but we have to make sure that those kinds of mistakes don't bring so much danger to our children that, um, that they end up not being with us any longer. So whether it's small interventions like, uh, like that one or more drastic ones, there's no such thing as a wasted opportunity to protect your child. Um, the very technology that we have in our homes and our pockets today may be part of the problem, but with this bill, we're trying to bring these devices in, in as part of the solution, and I'm proud to be the, a, a part of that bipartisan solution. Our le legislation would give parents a more balanced level of access to protect their kids from the harm caused by social media and online pressures, and be there for parents during the most vulnerable stages of their lives. And I, I think we all hope that our colleagues will join us in this mission. Um, I'm gonna ask uh, um, my colleague, Josh Kahnheimer, who I know has to leave, and then we'll turn it over to Mary Nancy. No, you go first. You sure? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. we have oh, yeah. these two that have to go first. I, I know no I'm worried. Sorry. No worries. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Josh Kahnheimer. Uh, thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you for your leadership on this, and buddy, thank you so much. And, uh, and I want to thank the Bermans, uh, uh, Sam Chapman, thank you so much as well. Sorry, Laura and Sam. Um, uh, and Rose and Robert, thank you so much. Uh, it was, it was uh, so nice to meet you today. And, 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 um, and uh, the parents of Nate Bronstein and Deb Schmill for, uh, or Deb went, but for, for their strength that gives us a lot of hope. Uh, as Debbie said, you know, I, I have uh, a 14-year-old daughter, an uh, 11-year-old son. Uh, and what is so scary today is that the minute they pick up their phone, they go off into a separate world, and a world that we as parents in many ways have no control over. So yes, I used to know when they'd go on their bike and I can have an app that tells me where they are on their bike um, or where they're driving to, but I have no app that right now or no tool that lets me actually see what's going on in terms of their conversations they're having on Snapchat, which disappears. There are others that don't disappear, uh, as you know, but Snapchat disappears. And uh, as they were showing me just today, again, I saw this before, there's signals that can be sent, literally, that uh, drug dealers use, right? Uh, emojis that will tell you, here, you can buy cocaine. Here's how you know that this person's a drug dealer. And once you open it up, the algorithm switches, and you're off and running, and they're coming for you. And so I can't imagine the pain that you all are feeling. I just want you to know that your energy and efforts, along with this phenomenal team here, and I'm hoping all of our colleagues, will make sure that others don't have to feel the pain that you're feeling, whether it's about drugs, whether it's about bullying, um, and how horrific that can be and how scary. I'm, I think about this all the time with my daughter, because kids can be mean, really mean and quick, and then they just jump on the bandwagon, and I get it, they don't want to stand out and speak up, right, as you were talking about today. They just, and that's the dangers of, of Snapchat or TikTok, which I think should be shut down, in my opinion, for lots of other reasons. I agree. Um, uh, right, it is literally an arm of the Chinese government, which I don't understand how it's being allowed to operate in our country, are you done with Instagram, and it's just unfettered access. One in four young people see illicit drugs advertised for sale on social media, one in four. It's insane. The price of cyber billing on social media, same insanity, whether it's about their academic performance or physical health, their psychological well-being. I know it's tragically, oh, we lost Nate. You know, I couldn't believe it, but according to one study, about 43% of young adults have self-harmed content on Instagram, and about 32% indicated they had performed the same or similar self-harming behavior as a consequence. This is not a partisan issue. This is just asking for transparency and giving parents the tools to be parents. I mean, it's not that much to ask. Listen, I know these companies are making a fortune. And I'm not saying you stop making money. I'm just saying, hey listen, just do the right thing and give parents the tools to be able to be parents. So that we can know if the kids, uh, you know, my, like where my son and daughter are in the neighborhood. That's all I'm asking. 
for, and all I know you're asking for, and all this legislation asks for, transparency and tools so parents can be parents and make sure they can save and watch out for their kids. We're gonna get this done. Thanks for your help. God bless. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, and I'd like to uh, thank uh, Representative Westerman Schultz for bringing us all together, um, and to thank my colleagues for organizing this event to raise awareness of Sammy's Law. And then I'm gonna deviate, and I'm gonna say, it shouldn't take a tragedy for parents to experience a tragedy for all of us to come together, private sector, public sector, elected representatives, nonprofits, for us to come together and say, we are going to protect our children. This critical child safety legislation would address and help parents be better informed about a child's dangerous interactions on social media and fill in critical access and awareness gaps when children face issues or problems on popular platforms. When I grew up, and my children were young, I only had to worry if they were gonna go into a bad neighborhood or a bad place or interact somebody on the street when they're out at the movie theaters or sporting events. But millions of children and teenagers are susceptible to the adverse effects of social media every single day. I'm proud to join my colleagues on Sammy's Law, a common sense solution that would give parents the freedom to safeguard their children's online presence, especially in this ever-changing social media landscape. This legislation gives parents options for third-party safety apps that can alert them when dangerous content is being shared with their children and provide mental health resources for children if needed. As a mother, my heart breaks for Sammy's parents and all parents. I want you to know that your work is making a difference, that through your challenge, your despair, comes the energy to do something that all of us in a bipartisan fashion should want to see passed immediately. Your work is saving and protecting children. So thank you for your advocacy. And thank you to the other families and attendants for your tireless work to protect children. I urge all of my colleagues to join us and protect our children from dangerous interactions on social media. Thank you so much. All right. Dr. Fryer. Hello, everybody. I want to, I'm Kim Schreier, uh, representative from Washington's 8th Congressional District, also a pediatrician. I want to thank my colleagues. I want to thank the parents who are here today uh, for sharing their painful experiences and turning this into legislation that will help other parents, other children, other families. Uh, as a pediatrician, children are always top of mind for me. It's why I've worked hard to pass legislation to support children's mental health uh, to protect them from gun violence and to protect them from serious dangers online, which is something that we are still working on, a few of us in the same committee. Now, some of those dangers are simply from too much screen time. Some are from the addictive nature of social media that keeps children from getting sleep and keeps them from normal social interaction. But there's also this real danger, this very real danger of access to predators or finding information online about suicide, a how-to guide, or increased depression and suicidality and anxiety, and even information that encourages eating disorders. And we are seeing all of these spiking in our children and it coincides with the use of social media. There's also exposure to extremism and hate groups that specifically targets young boys. And parents need to know if their children are exploring dangerous content, but without ideally violating the parent-teen trust by having to monitor every text and social media account, some of which, as you just heard, Snapchat disappears. And that's where Sammy's Law comes in. It is meant to protect children, and it gives parents the ability to securely use third-party safety apps for any social media platform <coughs> that allows children under 17 to use that platform. It's just a way to alert parents if there are posts increasing, it, it suggesting an increasing risk for suicide or drug use or eating disorders or predation or dangerous new friends or as Representative Wasserman Schultz mentioned, just people coming in from the outside who you can't trust. <clears throat> and it also preserves the parent-teen relationship in that way. Sammy is remembered by his parents and his friends as a 
sweet and funny and curious A student. And on February 7th of 2021, Sammy was approached on social media by a drug dealer and was able to purchase and have drugs delivered to his home. These were poison, a lethal dose of fentanyl that ended Sammy's life. And we talk about that, One Pill Can Kill, and it has already stimulated so many conversations in my own home with my 15-year-old, who, by the way, has no social media accounts for a reason. But one day when he does, I will be thankful for Sammy's Law to allow me to make sure he stays safe. As parents, we want to do everything in our power to keep our children safe. I want to thank the parents and the families who are here today. I want to thank you for your advocacy to make sure that your pain turns into a safety mechanism for children and for families all across this country. Thank you. We stand with you. To wrap up, the Well, thank you all very much for having me here today, and thank you for being here. This is extremely important, and this is bipartisan. It's bipartisan for a reason, because this problem is bipartisan. This problem doesn't just impact one party or another party. It impacts all of us. More importantly, it impacts our children. Look, we, we can be naive and think that this doesn't happen, but we can't be irresponsible. And we're not going to be irresponsible. We're going to address this problem. This is a situation that I can only imagine as a father, as a grandfather. I, I just, I can only imagine. I want to thank you for your courage. I want to thank you for being here and for what you're doing. You are our heroes, and I mean that sincerely. I think Debbie said that no effort to save our children or protect our children is ever wasted. And certainly this is not going to be wasted. You know, Sammy was 16 years old. Yes. Took one pill. I want to share a story with you, somewhat embarrassing, particularly in front of Dr. Shire, but I'm a healthcare professional. I'm a pharmacist. I was at a, a town hall meeting. I made a mistake. I, I said, I said, we've got a problem with fentanyl addiction in this country. And this mother stood up and corrected me as she should. And she said, no, sir, it's not addiction. She said, my son took one pill and he's dead. That's fentanyl poisoning. She was right, I was wrong. Look, we're not trying to spy on anyone here. We're not trying to invade anyone's privacy. What we're trying to do is to save our children. What we're trying to do is to give our parents a tool, a tool in the tool chest to use. These apps will work. If it saves one life, it's worth it. That's all we're asking here. This is legislation that, that needs to pass. This is legislation that we need to be working more on. I can't tell you how much we appreciate y'all being here. Your courage is an inspiration to all of us. I want to thank all my colleagues for their work in helping to get this legislation passed. I hope no one ever has to go through what you've had to go through, and I know you feel the same way. You know, in our lives, there are people and places we remember. And I know your memories will always be with you. This is the type of legislation that I hope to remember. There are times we do some good things up here. This is an opportunity for us to do one of those good things. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for your courage, for your inspiration to all of us. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. No. Okay. <laughs> thank you all uh, for joining us. Um, and I want to thank my colleagues for being here. Um, as you heard, 
The bill is named after Sammy Chapman, a sweet and funny and curious A student um, who I think we all wish we had the opportunity to meet. Um, you've heard the story about how harm came to him that ended his life. Um, matter of fact, our former colleague, uh, Ted Deutsch, lost a nephew in nearly, uh, nearly the identical way. Um, one, one instance in which he had a fentanyl-laced, supposedly safe substance to take that, that he was taking and, and lost his life. And I don't think any of us can imagine the grief of losing their child. Um, and I'd like to ask uh, Sam and Laura to come and join us to talk about Sammy and the importance of this law. <coughs> So uh, during the pandemic, when we were sheltering at home, I had just recently said to a girlfriend, the one silver lining of this pandemic is that I have two teenage boys stuck at home with me, and I don't need to worry about their safety. I, until February 7, 2021, believed that if my, any of my children were going to access drugs, they needed to know a drug dealer, know someone who knew a drug dealer, find a drug dealer, go to an area where there were drug dealers. I had no idea that drug dealers were reaching out to my son, accessing my son, and connecting with my son through Snapchat. And unbeknownst to us, as you heard, he uh, was approached by a drug dealer who sent him a colorful menu of all sorts of pills and drugs that he would deliver to our door as easily as a pizza and did so while we were asleep. And my, his brother and I found him dead on the floor on Super Bowl Sunday. I haven't cried all day, but as I walk through the halls of Congress, with his ashes around my neck. If you'd asked me if I would be here three years ago, I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> and Sammy's law is not going to save Sammy. And his brothers aren't gonna die through social media, but other children are dying every day. And so we're doing this for them. We're doing this to save other children from Sammy's fate and to save other families from the devastation that we have to live with every day. And this is a simple law. This is a simple ask. We aren't asking to take social media down. We aren't even asking social media to change, although Lord knows there's a lot they need to change. We want our children to have independence. We want our children to have autonomy. We want our children to be goofballs and to be able to explore. But we also know that good kids make bad decisions. And even more importantly, that there are dangers online. That when you allow, I had no idea before February 7th, 2021, that when we allow our kids on social media, it is the equivalent of dropping them off in the very, very, very most dangerous area with drug dealers and predators and pimps and sextortionists and expecting them to be able to navigate it by themselves without parental supervision. And what Sammy's law would allow for is just those guardrails so that they can have the autonomy and freedom, but when they are crossing a line that is putting their lives in danger, when predators are approaching them that they may not even recognize, <coughs> we can step in. And if we had had Sammy's Law, which of course would not be called Sammy's Law, when Sammy died, he would still be alive today. We would have been able to intervene. And the same is true of every parent in this room who has lost a child. So I'm so, so grateful for the support. And I'm so full of prayers that the rest of the lawmakers will join us and see the common sense approach this takes and help us save children's lives because the social media companies are not going to do it. They are not incentivized to do it. It's not a, they don't care about our children. They only care about how many users they have, not about the well-being of their users. It is up to us. And until they are legally required to allow safety software, they are not going to.
drug that poisoned our son started its journey in China, made its way to Mexico where the cartels took over, the pill molds and the precursors that China sent, and they shifted across into the United States with the help of social media, driving those people where they needed to go, and then to the drug dealers. And the drug dealers solved the last mile problem using Snapchat, using Instagram's instant messaging, TikTok, Facebook's instant messaging, Discord, the gaming platform, and don't forget the gaming platforms. They play with your children for months before they hit them up for some damage or drugs or sextortion. And they think they're with their best friend by then. And so they're trusting their children. As my wife says, their corpus callosums haven't developed yet. So they're not making the right decisions. And we're supposed to protect them. But we need a bridge. We need a bridge from their technology into us. They're digital natives, and we aren't. We need a simple system, like exists, apps that will tell us something dangerous happens on our children's devices. And we need programs that go across devices and across platforms. It can't just be on one platform or the kids will jump over to another. And that's what Sammy's Law does. It requires that all platforms with children allow for safety software integration. And that's the least they can do to put us back in the driver's seat when there's danger for our children. I don't want anyone to have to see what we saw my son's football team covered him with dirt one at a time while we watched. I tried to resuscitate my son and failed. These are things no parent should have to witness. And I can tell you the PTSD that comes from that takes years to go away. We're here with other parents. They're all suffering the same. They've all had the PTSD. Some of them still do. It takes a long time. Time is the only cure when this happens to you. There are no tricks. There's no easy road. <coughs> they found our son's killer, and they let him walk. And we've had to let go of the revenge piece and the justice piece and just hope that we can use his story to try and save other children. The children matter. Children don't have a party. This is bipartisan for a reason. Everyone wants the children protected. So many are dying. It's time to do something about it. And I really praise the leaders who are with us here today who are putting a stake in the ground and saying no more. We parents have been saying no more for a long time. And all of that screaming has finally reached the halls of Congress. And we can only hope that all the others who are here with these leaders will listen and vote our way and pass it on to the Senate and then to the President. It's time to do something about all the deaths Please. I'd like to introduce the promising you will introduce them. Thank you. You know, whether it's uh, drugs, whether it's mental health issues, whether it's human trafficking or cyberbullying, it's still a child. Thank you for that testimony. I want to now introduce Rose and Rob Bronstein, who share the same pain as the Chapmans, who share the same pain as so many people in this world, so many parents, the loss of a child. On January 13th of 2022, the Bronsteins tragically lost their 15-year-old son, Nate, to suicide after he was viciously cyberbullied by his classmates over Snapchat. They turned their pain into purpose and founded the nonprofit organization Buckets Over Bullying, a Chicago based nonprofit initiative whose mission is to stop cyberbullying of children and teens through education, lawmaking, and legal action. On behalf of all the sponsors of this bill, we are thankful for your efforts to prevent more tragedies from occurring, and we also thank you for joining us today and sharing your story. Rose and Rob, I want to invite you up now, and thank you again. My name is 
Rose Bronstein, standing beside me is my husband, Rob. We're here from Chicago. Congress urgently needs to prioritize social media safety for our nation's children. And I know this because on January 13, 2022, we lost our son, Nate Bronstein, forever 15, to suicide after he was viciously cyberbullied by his classmates at the Latin School of Chicago. Through Snapchat, Nate was insulted, harassed, and threatened with physical and deadly harm, including a message through Snapchat directing him to go kill himself. One of his tormentors reposted the Snapchat message targeting Nate to 200 friends. Social media, including Snapchat, left Nate with no safe place and no refuge. It enabled horrific bullying that continued 24-7 and spread throughout the Chicago, the Chicago area. It included teens that Nate had never met. A child who is cyberbullied is four times more likely to engage in self-harm, attempt suicide, or die by suicide. The phones in our children's pockets are dangerous weapons. Social media platforms are harming our children and our children are weaponizing social media to harm each other. And in some cases, these harms, specifically cyberbullying, are resulting in devastating and deadly consequences for thousands of families. If social media platforms like Snapchat gave our family the choice to use third-party software, we can attest to you that Nate would be here today. As soon as Nate received those dangerous, life-threatening messages, Rob and I would have been alerted through third-party safety software, and we would have had the opportunity to intervene and protect our son from further harm. This is why we are here today to advocate for Sammy's Law. Sammy's Law is analogous to a seatbelt for our children who use social media. While social media platforms remain unmonitored and dangerous environments for our children, parents need to have the tools to protect our children's social media experiences. How many more children have to die before serious and meaningful action is taken? <laughs> Sammy's Law is life-saving legislation. It will result in an immediate impact and minimize the dangers our children are exposed to on social media platforms. We would like to thank Representative Wasserman Schultz, Representative Schreier, Representative Carter, and Representative Miller Meeks for sponsoring Sammy's Law. We call on Congress to pass the common sense bipartisan bill without delay. Please, please, let's protect our children. so much to both of you and to protect the parents and families um, who've lost children and are not, and are making sure that their children's losses are not in vain. Um, before I introduce uh, our, our final speaker, I, I just want to emphasize that social media platforms have been rapidly changing, I mean, before our very eyes. And I mean, just over the course of my own career, you know, there was nearly all the social media platforms available, you could see who was interacting with and communicating with your child until the advent of the behind the scenes messaging platforms that were not as accessible. And so, and then Snapchat came on the scene with the disappearance of messages. And I remember how disturbed I was when my kids all started going on Snapchat and uh, I had previous ability to see you know, their text messages, which I could get on my phone, their social media interactions, because there wasn't the disappearance, uh, the, the, the disappearance provision. And so this law will help us keep up with the rapidly changing environment for our vulnerable children through their social media interactions. It's critical, it's critical. It's just like we would normally have protected, been able to protect our children when they were playing outside 
Now they are playing online and parents are handcuffed and it's unacceptable. So now I'd like to introduce Mark Berk Berkman, who's the CEO of the Organization for Online Safety. Good afternoon, my name is Mark Berkman. I'm the CEO of the Organization for Social Media Safety. We are the first and leading national consumer protection organization focused exclusively on social media. I wanna thank all of the survivor families that are here today, the Berman Chapmans, the Bronsteins, Schmills, the Nevels. These are fierce and tireless advocates working to protect children, not only across the country, but across the world. I wanna thank representatives Wasserman Schultz, Carter, Schreier, and Miller Meeks for their bold leadership in answering the urgent call from parents across the country who are begging Congress to protect our children from the dangers of social media. Now let's be clear, these threats are not theoretical. They are severe, they are pervasive, and they are harming children worldwide. On social media, 46%, 46% of children report experiencing cyberbullying. Predators extort our children, drug dealers market their drugs, human traffickers target young teens. Suicide, depression, anxiety, and eating disorders rise alongside excessive social media use. The list of dangers is tragically long. Thankfully, we now have Sammy's Law, a bipartisan common sense intervention that will provide immediate protection to literally millions of children from all these dangers. The bill will finally give parents and caregivers the choice to use third-party safety software on all major social media platforms. Among its numerous capabilities, safety software can provide life-saving alerts to parents when dangerous content comes across a child's social media account. If a child is being preyed upon, bullied, solicited for drugs, safety software can warn parents who can then intervene before serious harm takes place. If a child is ideating on suicide, seeking out content glorifying eating disorders, being exposed to extremist violence, safety software can provide a warning to parents so that they can get their children the help, support, and resources that they need to stay safe. Safety software is a proven effective intervention already providing protection for millions of children from the harms of social media. The problem is that the social media platforms for the safety software to work need to provide data access from the child's <coughs> account to the safety software. Some of those platforms do provide that access. Others, like Snapchat and TikTok, tragically refuse to do so. This is unconscionable. Children are dying while big social denies parents a readily available safety tool. We can change that. It was a privilege for the Organization for Social Media Safety to work with the sponsors of Sammy's Law. After months of deliberate, intentional drafting, this bill is laser focused to give caregivers this critical option to increase child safety while maintaining the highest levels of privacy and data security. We have seen enough broken hearted parents. We now realize the callous disregard Big Social has for our children. And we know today that we can no longer delay action. For the sake of our children, Congress must pass Sammy's law with due haste. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That concludes our, uh, our formal remarks. Um, I don't know if there's any press here that wants to ask any questions. Um, just a question. Um, just Let us know where you're from. Oh, Samantha Manning with Cost TV Group. Um, just a question about how it would work for parents. Would each platform have their own safety software app associated with it that parents can download or whatever they want? Yeah, that's, that's our technical 
expert answer those questions. <laughs> yeah, so the bill really places a negligible burden on the platforms. These are called third-party safety software providers because they are separate from the social media platforms themselves. All the social media platforms have to do is essentially flip a switch when a parent requests and allow data to flow from a child's social media account to the chosen, chosen by the parent, safety software provider. It is the safety software providers existing on the market that will provide that enhanced protection, not the platforms themselves. They don't have the profit incentive and have shown they don't have the incentive to do so by themselves. So that's why we have these third parties doing it. So parents can download just one third party app that they choose then to have it all? The parents can choose any of the apps available on the market, make their choice, let the platform know, and then their child has that additional protection. Why don't you share how in practicality it would work? Absolutely. So a uh, parent makes their choice. Um, say they choose an operator like Bark, which exists on the market today. They go, they put their child's social media account login information. Uh, then Bark is able to receive that data, currently from platforms that voluntarily choose to do so, and those do exist. It gets that content, and then it uses algorithms to analyze if there are any dangers uh, that a child is being exposed to. So we covered a number of those. Suicidal ideation, drug trafficking, cyberbullying. It then sends a parent an alert saying your child has been exposed to cyberbullying, for example, and the parent can then take um, what very well may be life-saving intervention. And we'll include, but we didn't talk about violence, but violence and school violence. The shooter, uh, the Oxford school shooter, posted on social media before that happened. If uh, the parents of those following him had had third-party safety software employed, they would have received those alerts, there would have been a warning. So the spectrum of dangers that we are providing protection for in Sammy's Law is very comprehensive and will protect uh, millions from many, many social media related dangers that we see today. But, but it's limited to safety related concerns. It's not like, it's important to note for people who are concerned about protecting privacy that we're not, th this Sammy's Law would not allow a parent to be exposed to all of the interactions that their children have online, it would just be in this finite category of you know, their safety being jeopardized. So there's some that you know, are concerned about whether or not children could, uh, who are struggling with their sexual identity could be outed. That, that is not in the category of, uh, of issues that notification would occur. I just have one other follow-up. Yeah. Uh, are you in talks with your colleagues in the Senate about we, we, we are. We're, we're going to be working to, uh, to, to bring on board uh, United States senators on both sides of the aisle as well. So are we. Yes. <laughs> and, and we have our really incredible uh, advocates that I think will probably be quite persuasive as they were with us. Yes and no. We, we have informed them of that, and they're aware of it. Uh, and it is a priority, obviously, it's a priority for all of us. And um, as you know, there are a lot of issues right now before Congress. But, um, but yeah, we, we, we hope that we can get to this as soon as possible. We're gonna continue to push forward, and, and certainly we're gonna put it at the top of the list. As, I'm gonna put it at the top of my list and continue to push forward. The good news is that we have a number of members, uh, I mean, most of the members that are co-leads <coughs> are members of the Energy and Commerce Committee, which is the relevant committee that the bill is, is, will be referred to. And so that's always helpful when you have uh, members on the committee of reference. Any other questions? Okay, thank you so much for Thank you.